Hello Warrior Nation and welcome back to the Squadcast, the official podcast of Glasgow Warriors. My name is Craig Wright and I'm one half of the hosting duo of this particular podcast. Now, just want to give you a heads up before you get stuck into this episode. Due to technical difficulties in recording, the audio quality will be lower than in previous episodes. We have tried to tidy the audio up as best we can for you, but we will make sure that we are back to our usual standards for episode 19 coming your way next week in the lead up to our match against Zebra Parma at Scots and tickets are available at glasgowarriors.org. Anyway, having said all that, enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to episode 18 of the Squadcast, the official podcast of Glasgow Warriors. Thank you to everybody for listening in as usual. Hope you're enjoying the, the show and hope you're getting ready for this weekend's rescheduled match with the Emirates Lions down in Johannesburg. If you're lucky enough to make the trip out that way. Let us hear you on the broadcast on, on Saturday. If you're like myself and my co-host, Mr. Murphy Walker, you're preparing to watch it from home. Murphy, how do you think the boys are going to go? I am thinking we'll do pretty well. Um, we're in a good spot just now. Um, obviously, you go to altitude, which is a wee bit different. The ball flight's a wee bit different. Not that I need to worry about that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be a tough challenge, purely. They're bigger boys. Um, well obviously, this is the second time we're previewing them. Yeah. It yeah, was the first time around, and then obviously that ship sailed away after the illness. But um, yeah, I think the boys are all raring to go because they obviously gutted us. A lot of them were gutted because they were getting opportunities last time. Um, and obviously, this week they get another opportunity to go out there and do a job. And uh, yeah, it's a wee bit different this time, obviously, because it's kind of a in and out job. You're up there for a prolonged amount of time. so. It's a case of landing a couple of days training, play the game and straight home. So yeah, it's a bit of a, as you say, an SAS job, in and out, get the job done. So yeah, the boys are looking forward to it and they know what they need to do. And obviously coming off the, the back of a good win here at Scotland on Friday night against Ulster, 17-11, three tries, not exactly a classic, I think it's fairly safe to say, but how good is it to see the boys get the job done? Yeah, like you say, it wasn't really a thriller, was it? Um, but it was great. I mean, I went at home against that. Top five sides, you're always going to take that at the end of the day. Um, but I know a lot of the boys were actually quite gutted towards the end because we wanted to go for that bonus point, and uh, we unfortunately gave them the losing bonus, which meant that they went above us by a point, I think it was, in the table. But, um, for now. Yeah, for now, of course. <laughs> um, but it's great. Like, I went at home in front of that crowd on a wet evening. I mean, you can't really complain, can you? Um, and it also shows that. Like we're not just worried about a win now, we're, we're talking about bonus points and boys aren't disappointed about a win. Like we're, we're, we're shooting for nothing but a bonus point for every game, um, which is so good to see. And uh, well, it's obviously important to get the bonus point each game because these things all add up at the end of the season. And then uh, yeah, hopefully, obviously the more you get, the better it is in the home semis and home quarters and whatnot. So, yeah, no, it's good. Um, and there was a lot of fan engagement as well during the, before the game and at half time and that and it was uh, no, it was good to see everybody out and it was uh, officially sold out. It was officially sold out. Officially sold out so yeah it was that no, was great and the atmosphere was very good so no complaints from my side and uh, yeah. You talk you talk about fan engagement pre match. Our guest today is probably very perfectly placed to talk about fan engagement pre match given I've seen clips of you doing rounds with a, a temporary tattoo from Friday night's game. <laughs> two, two temporary tattoos. Two temporary tattoos, let's get that on the record. Jack Mann, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Craig, how are you? I'm very well, very glad to, to be you, yeah. again, chatting to you on this very fine, quite clear Tuesday afternoon. You've actually not got a vest on, Murphy, we'll just should probably cover that off. You're, you're on Tuesday and you're not going to rest. Oh, there we go. Um, anyway, back to yourself, Jack. He's looking good, Murphy. No, he's got the guns. Thanks, Jack. I'm achieving to try to get you. Oh, too <laughs> um, first of all, you're still the, the road to recovery after taking a bit of a head injury against Bath. Just yes. tell us how that's going. Yeah, so uh, at the Bath game, um, I got a wee, uh, head injury. Unfortunately, that was my third year last year, um, so I've had to take three months uh, yeah. to recover. And um, sort of standard um, time. It's not because of any um, symptoms that I've been having. Um, it's a three month stand down from contact, so then hopefully, I think it's around it was 10th of December when I got uh, the knock, so maybe 10th of March, around then, maybe back into contact and stuff, and then hopefully kick on back yeah. into it from there. It's obviously a protocol that we, we're completely supporting, that there's no rushing you back from whatsoever, but no. we've talked a couple of times on, on this podcast before. In terms of debuts, 
think it's pretty safe to say yours, yours was quite a popular one in terms of both the selection and actual performance as well. How was it for, for yourself? Oh, it, was, uh, it was an amazing feeling. Um, it wasn't just my debut for um, Glasgow, it was my professional debut um, as well. And um, yeah, it was an amazing feeling. Uh, my parents came down to the game as well, which was uh, really, really nice to have them there. And um, yeah, I mean, it was, um, yeah, it was a very, very special day, and, um, especially to do it with such a good, uh, good group of boys. Um, yeah, really enjoyed the tournament. It's been a long time coming, to be honest. Yeah. Um, Jack and I played twenties together, um, and obviously you played a lot of Super Six with Harriets, and then uh, obviously broke out recently into here, which is obviously great having another addition to our small circle of friends. Yeah, well, really, yeah, really. <laughs> is, uh, I think is in North affected golf more than anything, to be honest. With you. <laughs> I was wondering how long it was going to take. Uh, yeah, Murphy Rock, the most unhumble man, or most unhumble victor, sorry. Fun golf on the planet. Well, yeah, okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe not on the pitch, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, we, um, we had a very uh, t- uh, tightly fought game um, last weekend, uh, me and Ross and uh, Murphy came out on top on the final on the final green. You're, um, not, you're not going to hear the end of that for, for no, a I don't, yeah. yeah it's, um, really, so is that. Go on. You I'll let you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, Murphy to say it was a what, 40, 50 foot putt, but I think in reality, maybe about 20 foot. Um, Ross had about an 8 foot putt, um, and if they halved it, the game went to a playoff, so I would I would still be able to win. Yeah. So naturally, I got behind Murph, was helping him read the putt. Um, we, were getting, sort of, yeah, we were getting the. Are you, trying to, put, are you right. trying to put this on you? Yeah, 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 yeah. maybe. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, don't do that. <laughs> and, um, yes, and then so Murphy came up and uh, amazingly sank the putt, and then Ross missed his eight footer. Um, so I feel like the real victim of the story is actually probably Ross. Exactly, and I also I may add I wanted to rescind all the help I'd given him <laughs> in helping him win the game. Um, that's been my that's the best one I've had in a long time. Yeah. Murphy, from your side, just tell us about sinking that 120 foot putt that win the Yeah, the match. Okay. I had, I, after I sunk it, I just walked over to the cup. Took my ball out, waved the fans, and just uh, <laughs> shook across his hand, and we just had a nice, quiet lunch yeah. in the clubhouse afterwards. And if you're wanting to to meet the victor on tour, he's doing a victory tour at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Open top match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very glad we're somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, on that note, we will get on with the, the Squadcast properly. For those of you who are new listeners, we've got the Squadcast hat in front of us. Uh, it, it is filled with the usual various mix of Squadcast scenarios. Your job, Mr. Man, is to answer them the best you can about your Glasgow Warriors teammates, and that's basically it. That's the entire guidance. Um, so, without further ado, would you like to pick your first scenario out of that? Just go for the one on top here. Well, that's always a risky strategy to be fair. Oh, who is most likely to forget slash remember your birthday? Um, well, I mean, I don't feel like, I mean, do you even know my birthday, Murphy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. After you answer my birthday. <laughs> After who you Oh, yeah, I don't know yours. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. No, 17th of April. Who? Me? You. Well, it's close. Exactly. 25th of October. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I'm pretty. Uh, obviously, being around from New here, I don't feel like many people would uh, yeah. would actually know my birthday. Um, so I'll probably Your say. Your flatmate's that, pretty forgetful. Yeah. Not. I wouldn't say with birthdays and that. Just generally speaking. Just passports and birth cards, especially. And, and shall we name and shame said person? Uh, my flatmate is James Smith. <laughs> oh, James Smith. <laughs> uh, what? Was it South Africa? One of the South Africa trips, he turned up here and the bus was even at 8 a.m. or something. He turned up, turned up, sorry, and then checked his bag and his passport wasn't his bag and he left it on his kitchen table. So he had to sprint home, get it and return. Um, and then another trip, I think it was down to Newcastle. Oh yeah. For the Europe game last year. I mean, thankfully you don't need a passport to get to Newcastle. Correct. You confirm that. But you do need yeah. a mouth card to play a rugby game. That so does help. Yeah. He said he checked his bag, it wasn't there, and he made uh, Stuart now drive it to Newcastle, I think. Um, <laughs> but he had to go from like, Stuart wasn't that going like, straight from here to Newcastle, he was like going across to Edinburgh from his house over to here, down somewhere to pick somebody up, up and then back down to Newcastle. So he had to come all the way to Glasgow to go back to Edinburgh and drive down to the game, which was, yeah. I seem, I seem to remember it might have been Mr. Kellogg, the 
Stuart was picking up. So that's an interesting detail to go in there. So exactly. So the, the other question for that is like you could have just gone to a shop, probably, you know? Yeah, well these days these mouth guards are pretty fitted. Yeah. yeah. And you've got to do the old boil on the bag. Uh, uh, nothing get your teeth knocked out. Nothing but the best um, for your teeth and old gnashers. That's so. fair fair play. Like you've got to look after those yeah. those gnashers as you said. Exactly. So who's who's your man? Is Ollie your your quick one? Um Ollie maybe to uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll say Ollie to remember. Ollie to remember. Um, if, uh, if he's my flatmate, I'd be pretty, uh, pretty hurt if he forgot. <laughs> you, so, um, do you remember what my flatmate did? At, uh, <laughs> David Lloyd? I do not. In terms of forgetful stuff, I don't know how you do this, but he arrived, got changed, went to the yes. sauna and whatnot. Yes. You can tell the rest of the story. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know it as uh, well as you did, but I believe he uh, left a couple items of clothing, was it? Yeah, uh, so. Rory Dodge, name and shame. He was <laughs> he was at David Lloyd, I think, on the Tuesday, going for a bit of recovery and so on and whatnot. And then I went there on the Friday, and I, I think there's about what about 400 lockers in that changing room. Yeah. I opened what, the one locker that I happened to open. It's like got a Warrior Gile, um tracky bottoms, something else, something else, but all with RD on it. And I was like, Rory's not. <laughs> <laughs> like Dodge is at home. I just left, and he can't be. He couldn't have beat me. He wasn't driving at that time. Yeah. And I phoned him. I was like, Dodge, have you left your stuff? He was like, What? <laughs> Turns out he just left everything on that Tuesday night. <laughs> he left all of it. I didn't realise. He, he, he literally left. I don't know. Cause he must have been in training gear, got changed out of it, and put it in there, and then got changed into his fresh kit and just walked <laughs> out. But luckily, it was still there. So it is always um, quite a good source of interest, actually, David Lloyd. You learn some there. Uh, Things about people, for instance, your uh, long line of dog names, um, yeah. which was actually um, no. it, uh, <laughs> two great names called Slavers and Slash of the Drool. Yeah, it's a Drool. Yeah. Funnily enough, I didn't name my two pet dogs. Not my dogs, but my family dogs. Slavers and Drools. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, cat called Tapu. There's some interesting conversations in the sauna. Oh, you know, we should do the squad cast in the sauna next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll work our way of work our way of waterproofing everything and put it into the sauna. Yeah, yeah. Um, there we go. And on that note, before we talk ourselves into another squad cast scenario, question two. <laughs> what I am going to get you to do that next year, just live, just. If you had to pick one teammate to be humanity's ambassador to aliens, who are you picking, Jack man? Ooh, um, that is an interesting one. There's a couple of options like, you can go here. Yeah, I feel like you'd want someone who just those one of those people that have it all. You know, yeah. smart, maybe quite good looking as well. Yeah, just um, say my name. Um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, immediately that pops to mind is uh, is Ross Thompson. I don't want to burn those too hard. <laughs> but um, <laughs> or um, maybe a Tom Jordan. These, these sorts of. Uh, uh, I could see TJ. I could, yeah. I could fit for him. Yeah. Um, I think they'd probably turn the ship around if they met Murphy. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> the look that Murphy is currently shooting across the table. Is. Here's a question. Do you believe in aliens, Jack? Um, you know what? Yeah. I, I, would, I would say so. I, would th- I think the chances of being something else out there are so great that, yeah, it probably is. Do you? I, I think that like, if we're here, surely mm. yeah. something else. Yeah. yeah. I really thought at the start of that you were going to say that you'd actually had an encounter with me. Like that was, I was getting my hopes out there. Have you ever seen a UFO? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Area 51, that's another thing to talk about. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Is It'll that what we're doing in the next episode? Yeah, that's. Yeah. Who knows what's going on in there? Who knows, man? Who knows? I mean, hopefully, the people that are actually there. Have you seen the. Uh, oh, what's that movie called? The Will Smith and. Uh, oh. No, <laughs> no. Aladdin. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow. What's it called? Tomorrow. Fresh Prince. End of tomorrow. No, what's that? Anyway, it's a movie and uh, Edge of Tomorrow. No. Is it Edge of Tomorrow? No, that's not. Like oh, um, the the Elysium. No, no. One with, no, not Elysium. <laughs> um, the one with Jaden Smith with his son. You say Will Smith. Yes, I did say Will Smith. You're talking about After Earth. No. no. Anyway, you guys talk. I'm just going to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So back, back to the original question from the ambassador side of things. Yes. We almost look, we've nailed down the fact that you're, you're picking Ross as your yes, no, ambassador for humanity. Ross. Is there anybody other than Murphy that you really don't want in that role? Ooh. Um, someone who'd give a bad impression of humanity. Feel free to take as long as you want because Murphy seems like he's struggling to work Google. At this point. <laughs> yeah. 
Independence Day. Ind ah, okay. Ah, I've right. actually seen that one. Which highly naturally has tomorrow in the title. Independence Day yeah. Resurgence as well. <laughs> yeah, Independence Day, great film. Shout out to Will Smith when he listens. <laughs> <laughs> big part, big, big score cast listener as well. Big Warriors yeah. fan, apparently. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Anyway, yes. You yeah, wouldn't I want to meet. Um, Your anti ambassador, as it were. Uh, I, you know, I don't think I would want that pressure. No, no. I think I think I would do a terrible job of it. <laughs> um, and um, like I said, Mark, I think we'd probably turn the ship around. So that's probably. Uh, I don't want to drop anyone. Try to drop anyone in it. That's a very noble way of doing that. That's yeah. I'm going to throw myself on this grenade. As I <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's fair. I can chisel. Approach. You would be oh, you're one of us. <laughs> <What is it? laughs> Take you home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. There's nowhere we can go with that after that question. So, uh, Murphy, pull the next one. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's go. You're launching a new business, Jack. Ooh. One of your teammates is the face of the business. Who is it? Right? Uh-huh. And who? Uh, sorry. And what are you selling? Well. This actually comes at quite a convenient time for me and, it. me and Murphy. Don't give it away. I won't give it away, but uh, we have some irons in the fire. Yeah. But, um, we yeah. gap in the market. Yeah, definitely. I think we've yet to decide who would be the face. Um, maybe we should leave <laughs> up some sort of vote or something. But, um, watch this space, Bruce. Watch this space. Watch this space, exactly. Um, it's, a, it's a sports item, should we, should we, I mean, yeah, you tease can, it. Yeah, you can tease, tease it. it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe tease it right. um, not rugby, though. Well, yeah, well, no, I, be, I spoke to physios, they said it. Yeah, that's very true. Well, maybe not for playing rugby, but oh. people associated with Yes. Um, Fans so as well. Put it this way, yeah. it's... Uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to word it without giving it away. Yeah. Um, something that fans could wear that keeps a certain part of their body warm. I have many follow-up questions. Yeah, we just yeah. need to get the work on back. Yeah, we need to get trademark. Yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah Macron, so hit us up so we can work out a deal, please. Yeah. yeah. At Macron. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mr. Macron. Fair. I, I, again, are, are we just saying yourselves at the face of this? I feel like we. I think yeah, maybe a duo. Yeah, I think we'd uh, man and Murph. Man and Murph. M and M. Yeah. That would need to trademark that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel, I feel like you might have made a bit of an issue. How much reckon that? We're behind a couple, a couple guys at that point. <laughs> <laughs> we'll double check that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. There's a quick answer to that question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's always said that he wanted to start a barber shop. Yeah, always bigger than always bigger than side hustles. He, um, he wants to start a barber shop with a coffee shop in it or something. Really? Yeah, that's what he's trying to do. Interesting. What um, side hustles have you got going? Uh, well, I mean, that just ideas. Yeah. He's, uh, he's always been there. Uh, always talking about this idea, this idea. I always thought Uber would be quite a good side hustle to go on with rugby because you can yeah. sort of nip in and out of it as you pleased. True. You had a Wednesday off, you could get in a big shift. Give yourself lift to lift to the game and lift to train as well. Exactly. There you go. Anybody from the Warrior Nation who wants to lift to Scotland, you can hit your <laughs> jack. <there> you <laughs> I can't remember, but Dars used to obviously get Hoovers a lot. Mm. And uh, he was an ex footballer. I played for Hearts. I remember him saying this, yeah. He's the, he actually does what we're doing right now. He, he runs huh. a podcast, but I can't remember what it's called. There we go. Maybe as an off ball. Or, uh, anyway, he used, he used to go on trips. A lot it used to be as a regular. There you go. <laughs> um, if you're listening, give us a shout. Yeah. What about uh, would you do a delivery or? Oh, uh, not delivery. I mean, if I was to, I think it'd be from the car. I mean, I think we'd do enough exercise here. I wouldn't be cycling around the <laughs> room. Ex- extra spin sessions. Big max and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, also, I think the temptation to eat the food um, would also be. Yeah. definitely be there. Well, given the fact that we've just filmed the, the pancake video, which I'm assuming will probably have gone out by the time this podcast <laughs> yeah, goes out, yeah. I can confirm that that might not be out. Yeah. Make sure you vote for the right team people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we probably shouldn't start a pitch battle at this point. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, pancakes weren't quite so appetising after uh, Gregor had his hands all over the room. <laughs> I'll say that. So. Alright, next, next one. Next one. Jack, you're back in again. Back in again. Let's go. Who would you most like to replace in a game? So this is this was the thing where we had a conversation in the office where you can come on any position uh-huh. for the last ten minutes of a game uh-huh. for for any any of your teammates. 
from any of the yeah, teammates. It doesn't have to be a straight swap in the back row for you. If you want to come on in the back row, more yeah. than welcome. But you can you can play anywhere you want for 10 minutes in a game. Is there um, pressure on the situation? Is it uh, when you say final 10 minutes in the game? Well, uh, let, let's say we're we're winning but in need of a bonus point. Like, we're, we're comfortably winning, but we've yeah. got three tries and we did a fourth try. Okay, okay. Um, I'd maybe like to go on in the wing then. Yeah. Um, maybe get a bit of glory in the, in the bonus <laughs> point. Um, so yeah, I'd probably say I'd probably play, replace um, who was in the wing last game. Cole. Cole was on the wing last game. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to. Imagine a handball on the wing. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd try handball. Okay, <laughs> if we're already if we're already a few points up, then. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Don't mind oh, I know, but I, I, I don't back myself to control a game to get. Uh, if we need a bonus point, we need a bonus point. You know. Just crash ball fly. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Have you always played eight. Um, well, yeah. when I was playing minis, I, uh, I did actually play in the back line. Um, played every position in the back line, and then at school, that was at last Wade, and then at school I played um, in the forwards, and yeah, have always been in the back row. Nice. Um, did we ever cross that at school? We would have done. I think you were you were in the year below me at Strath. Yeah. Because the H is just yeah. Because I'm saying I'm not October birthday. Yeah, yeah. As, as I know, and I am a uh, April birthday. Yeah. <laughs> November seventeenth. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you should have been in the same year. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm young for my year, and you're old for yours. Yeah, you're very yeah, young. You were held back. I believe. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I was too smart for the year I was coming in. Do it again. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, always. But no, we definitely would have in my last year. Played Strath, but maybe you wouldn't have been playing. Yeah. I don't know if it was towards the back because I didn't um, do Scotland under 18s that year, and I think well, I didn't do it at all. But um, towards the end of that season, I think it was when we played Strath, and you probably would have been doing that age grade stuff. So. And that was when you were in the back row? Um, yes, I was always in the back row at school, and then at Aki's, always back row. 20s? Um, 20s, always back row. Um, I don't really mean the odd switch in in the second row, but Answer? Um, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I honestly don't think I would. I would play rugby if I had to play further forward than the from the rather than the back row. Um, I'll try yeah. prop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. About yourself, Mr. Walker, do you fancy anywhere other than tight heads? Ah, ten. Obviously. Ten always. Yeah. yeah. Just a. Ah, I've just got an urge to kick. Really? Yeah. Get those big uh, size seventeen through the ball. Quite, yeah. That's always been there. Just even like crossfield. Imagine me and Jack. Jack's on the wing. I'd love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pinning corners and Jack's taking eyeballs and scoring. And Tell you what, after we come off this, I'll let you pitch that to Franco. Well, Franco's a wages now, so I'll go speak that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Just, just see how we go. And we'll, uh, we'll come for those every game next week. Yeah. Um, How's your place kicking? <laughs> I reckon, <laughs> give me a couple of sessions with Mossy. Yeah. All right. I mean, he's probably one of the best. He probably is. Kicking the ball himself. Yeah. So, I mean, be better to learn from. Exactly. You probably need to pull up. What do you need? What extra skills would you need to learn at the wing? Go march, some high edge stuff. That's what you need to learn. Yeah, I'd probably say so. I'd, I'd like to practice the high balls and get the turtle out. And, uh, Perfect shell. But, uh, I mean, apart from. 10, 11, perfect shell. Yeah. I'm here for it. Yes. Go with one more? Yeah, yeah, right. And then you are. surviving. <laughs> right. Final one. Who would your own friend be or who wants to be a millionaire? Oh. That is a good one actually. Not many wants, friends. So I feel like you'd want someone who had like a what did you say, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have many friends. Yeah, 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 exactly. There's not many to choose from. <laughs> uh, it would be a question if, you, if people picked up the phone. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> oh Jack Man's calling me in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um Ooh, it'd have to be someone smart. Who's university educated? Um, Don't say Ross. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got some quite niche knowledge, don't you? Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, I'd say I've got some niche knowledge, but again, how niche is niche coming up? Yeah, exactly. Like that, yeah. Depends on the topic. Um, I think you get an option of like three or four. Yeah, I think you get to fit the whatever session like, uh, okay. so, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you had to go for general knowledge, who would you pick? Yeah, general knowledge. I feel like someone, I feel like maybe one of the older boys, because I feel like general knowledge is sort of thing you pick up over time. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see. You had to go Harry Potter knowledge, like we spoke about before. 
I do, I do remember you saying this. This was a an undiscovered talent from, yeah. from pre, pre, previous episodes. George yeah. knows everything there is to Harry Potter. It's ridiculous. Yeah, so yeah. You never get a question about Harry Potter life. That's George. <laughs> George. So big, big Richie for Turner. general knowledge. Yeah, yeah. George, George Turner for any Harry Potter knowledge. Yeah. Anybody else? What other knowledge do you have? Scientific? Anybody? Um, it's a maths question. I know. Uh, I think Max Brooks is these maths stuff. Yeah. That's true. And um, so probably get him, uh, him on that one. Or Chris Townsend. He's maths. Well. Is he maths as well? I believe so. Um, you might correct me on that one. Um, but um, I mean, yeah, I, I think I'd be calling up people quite a lot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I would really do that well on a quiz. Um, <laughs> Pop quiz. Yeah. Speaking of great feedback by the yes. um, on the recent scorecast, the previous one with Shima. Mm-hmm. Um, when a fan messaged me asking if we can get Tom Gordon to do a pub quiz before the game. Because <laughs> 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 Tom does his uh, pub quiz every day in the car when he's yeah, yeah, yeah. when he's up front. So uh, yeah, we've got Craig here working on uh, something. To get yeah. Tom to do pub <laughs> yeah, quiz. Yeah. Our, our people are talking to Tom's people, by which I mean I'm getting Murphy to ask him to change from next time. And on that note, that will do us for episode 18 of the Squadcast. Thank you very much to, to Jack Mann for joining us. Hope to see you back out on the pitch again soon. Thank you for having me. Murphy, thank you again, as always, Thanks. for stepping in. Again, we hope yeah. to see you back out on the pitch soon. Yeah. Watch this space. Yeah, very shortly, guys. And we will see you back here next week for the next episode of the Squadcast. Tune in then and make sure to subscribe on Spotify and Apple Podcasts if you haven't already. If you haven't already, it's been about eight months. Why haven't you? Um, in the meantime, He's been Murphy Walker, he's been Jack Mann, I've been Craig Wright, and this has been the Glasgow Warriors Squadcast.